Okay, we've got a <clears throat> Admiral AM/FM radio from about 1965, mid 60s, something like that. It's a uh, model YG531. <clears throat> it's um, a very late tube AM/FM tube radio. It was made in Japan. Japan. Um, a very odd power cord on it with this. I don't even know if this is supposed to have come with it or not. Almost like a lamp switch or something on it. But the end of it says Kawasaki. Uh, you probably can't see it, but and it's got this antenna. Some sort of antenna connection that goes in the that antenna jack right there but um anyway I couldn't find the schematic on this thing um, it didn't list this model I went all the way up to 1969 looking for it and couldn't find it so I don't know, it may not have been a popular model or whatever, but uh, I did see some models that were similar to it that were from about the same time period. Um, and um, a lot of the YG models were made in the mid 60s, and you know, going by the overall appearance, I believe it probably was from about 60, anywhere from 64 to about 66. So, anyway, let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, we're getting a little bit of what I could tell some harm from the filter capacitor. You can always tell it's filter capacitor harm by turning the volume down. And when you have the volume all the way down and it still hums, it is definitely the filter capacitor humming. So anyway, I can hear some radioactivity or whatever when I move the volume knob, but it appears that the uh, tuning string, tuning dial string is broke. So this one's going to require a little bit of attention. already I can hear a little bit of radio activity from the speaker but without being able to tune in anything it's kind of hard to tell how well it works so let's go ahead and pull the chassis and see what the trouble is uh, I think I figured out what was going on with our dial string this had pulled off I was kind of just laying over in here had come off of there and then it looks like the string goes and crisscrosses to here and then wraps around here about three times and goes up here and then back up the back of here onto this little roller and um, well it goes up through here and then goes on to the dial pointer and then up to this roller and then back around down to the tuner but uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to it's when I put it back on there it's just a lot of slack in it I feel like it's stretched or something over the years so I'm going to try to see if I can't take this spring and move it over here Somewhere over in here and stretch it back out, tighten it back down, and see if that'll help. But this chassis was not easy to get out of this cabinet because they had it, they have it in here so weird. Um, I had to take about six or eight screws out just to get it out. And uh, I thought originally the front cover came off and the whole thing slid out, but it didn't work that way. You had to take the screws loose from here from the front faceplate and um, 
then it just you have to take all the knobs off and then it just slides out and I tell you these it seems like every radio that you go in they, they come apart a little bit different and it can be kind of frustrating sometimes when you think something comes out one way and it doesn't so let me see what I can do about this dial string and um, then I got to look into replacing this filter capacitor so uh, I'm gonna need some uh, about what's it three six two sixties and an eighty microfarad and hundred and fifty working volts for that so let me uh, check into that see what's going on with all this and we'll get back see if I can straighten out that dial string Okay, we're back together and playing. We got our dial string moving now. And basically, it was just a matter of tightening up that string. I ended up having to cut the string and retie it. Cut off a little bit of the string, retie it, and stretch it back out. And it seems to be working good now. Um, the radio does have a little bit of fuzziness to it. I may have to go back in and um, check the... Uh, I'm not sure if this one, I'm going to have to look, but I'm not sure if this one runs off a of selenium rectifier or not. It may be getting weak. But, um, anyway, um, the, uh, it, it's back working. It seems to receive pretty good, um, on FM. Let's see. FM seems to be okay. It ain't so outstanding the reception. So trends that we see now in in the south towards the um, separation. So. Guaranteed. Get your billions back, America. It's kind of fuzzy on some of the stations. Let's see how AM. I think it does a little better on AM. Nope. Five left. Order now. Gone so much. Out trying to get money. I am yours. You are mine. Hey, now why are you doing this? Because you want the... More of that bull crap talk radio. About all you can pick up on AM around here. Yeah. Notice uh, I did not replace the filter capacitor for some reason when I plugged it back in to check the dial it, <laughs> There was no more hum. So the only thing I can figure is the capacitor must have reformed to something inside of there I don't know But either way uh, obviously I think the radio hadn't been played in quite some time hey, congratulate. Hadn't played in quite some time so I'm, um, I would imagine it wouldn't have because of the the dial string not working right. Basically, it just needed to be put back on the on the little wheels and uh, tighten back up. So, see everything seems to be working okay now. Anyway, uh, I think we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, I may test the tubes or something in it and see what they are, how good they're doing, because it's pretty much the original tubes inside of it.